Hello everyone, this is Kevin T. Rodriguez of TheMovieWizard.com and let's talk about Universal Studios. Now Universal Studios has had a very good year in terms of the box office. They have produced three of the biggest hits of the year, which was Jurassic World, Furious 7, Minions. And they had other major surprise hits like Straight Outta Compton. But no one is bulletproof from a flop. There is a saying in Hollywood that the hits are supposed to make up for the misses, and this was definitely the proof that Universal needed for that. For they have pulled not one, but two movies after only two weeks of release. The first that they pulled, well, okay, it wasn't the first that they pulled, but we're going to start with it, was Gem and the Holograms. It opened at only like $1.7 million in the whole week. It just tanked. And they pulled the movie, and it's only in like 50 theaters now. So, for those of you who want to see it, and I assume there's not a lot of you who wanted to see it, you've pretty much missed the boat. Look for a cheap theater. Universal has stopped reporting the box office intake, so it's pretty much capped out at $2.1 million. Movie theaters are contractually obligated to keep a movie for two weeks, but after that, the studios can pull it or they can drop it, and I think Universal just decided to have mercy on everyone and said, we're going to pull this movie and we're not going to report the box office. It's a flop. Now, of course, the good news in that regard is that Gem and the Holograms only cost like $5 million to produce with minimal advertising, so it's not like that's going to be a huge dent in their bottom line. The other movie they pulled this week, though, did cost a lot of money, and the flop will be felt a little bit more and that is the excellent Steve Jobs one of the best films of the year it has been a major disappointment it opened up in limited release for two weeks made a lot of money you know for a per screen average it was doing pretty good then it opened nationwide and nobody came like it was just it was amazing like something that had great reviews all this promise and it opened wide and nobody came now universal hasn't outright just pulled that movie like they did gem and the holograms but they did trim the theater count by 2000 screens so now steve jobs is still out there but it's only on 461 apparently and if you want to see it there's a better chance of you seeing it there and I'm guessing Universal doesn't want to just give up on the film because this is still a big awards contender because movies that don't make a lot of money can still get Oscar nominations and Oscar nominations can help a movie make more money. Now I can totally understand why no one wanted to see Gem and the Holograms but people have wondered why didn't anyone want to see Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs is a big beloved cultural icon. He's the founder of Apple. He created the iPad and the iPhone. Why would a movie like that fail? Well, I've had some time to think about this since writing my review and watching the box office and seeing the movie pretty much just fall flat on its face, and I think the reason is Apple fans themselves. With all due respect to Apple fans, but people who buy Apple products are sheep. They're brainwashed. They don't want to think anything bad about the company that makes their stuff. They want to believe so badly that the iPhone is better than a BlackBerry that they're willing to pay $400 more for it, even though the BlackBerry does everything the iPhone does, and then some. So with that in mind, I don't think real Apple fans wanted to see a movie that showed a monster Steve Jobs who was basically mean to everyone, egotistical, petty. Even Apple, to a certain extent, did this little PR stunt where they said the movie was historically inaccurate and that Steve Jobs wasn't always like this. And yeah, there's a couple parts in the movie that are not true that there's no basis that they actually happened but ironically the couple things that I could spot off the top of my hand when I first saw the movie made Steve Jobs look good everything else with the exception maybe the timeline actually happened and it's well documented Steve Jobs was a jerk he was a genius but he was not a good man he wasn't even close to a good man in fact as far as I'm concerned the man was a complete failure in his personal life Professionally speaking, that is something completely different. He was a huge success there, but when it came to relationships and family, he was a failure. And this movie stressed that. And I don't think Apple fans want to see a Steve Jobs movie like that. They want to remember him as a good man, as a visionary. They want to remember the good things. When people die, it does strange things to people's memory of them. 
like all the problems you had before with them, they go away almost magically. You don't want to remember them. And I think that was the situation with Steve Jobs. Maybe another 10 years, people would be more open to a Steve Jobs movie where Steve Jobs was not a great man or even a good man. But for now, Apple fans just didn't want to see it despite how good the movie was. You know, the movie's only made like $16 million, which is about as much as the Ashton Kutcher movie has made. There was a $30 million budget with a little bit more in marketing. This one's going to hurt Universal a little bit more. The silver lining on this one, though, again, is that Steve Jobs, unlike Gem and the Holograms, was a very good movie, one of the best of the year. I'll even post a link to my review below, and it's probably going to get Oscar consideration, so this one will probably wind up profitable and good for them in the long run. So what do you guys think? Did anyone here see either of these movies? Do you think they deserve the thrashing and the financial disappointment that they did? I'd like to hear. Comment below, subscribe, share, favorite, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.